Kentucky, which discovered, first discovered, that Clinton used a private email server. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Congressman, explain why you are comfortable with Director Comey releasing word to Congress that there is this new wrinkle in the investigation involving Huma Abedin's emails before knowing if there's any there there. Well, I think there are two reasons. Number one, Allison, let's just concede being a police officer and a prosecutor is a lonely and tough job, and unusual facts make for some pretty tough conclusions. But he did tell Congress in July that the investigation had been completed, and he had determined that she didn't have specific intent to commit a crime. So I think he felt the need to supplement the record. Remember, John Koskinen is being investigated for potential impeachment for failing to supplement the record and update Congress. So I think, number one, you take him at his word that he wanted to supplement the record. But number two, uh, let's assume, arguendo, that Secretary Clinton today were to say to a rally, all of this is in the rearview mirror. I've been investigated. All of my aides have been investigated. There's nothing here. Well, if Comey knows that there is potentially new information that may impact the investigation, then what she's saying is not true. So under, uh, under the general theory that, that the public should be given the information right. and then they can sort it out, I, my guess is he, he wanted us to know that there was new potentially relevant information. Right, before knowing if it is relevant. I mean, you know, you've heard lots of legal experts say that it just breaks with protocol, him coming forward before knowing if there's relevant information. Yeah, I, I wish I had a nickel for every time I asked the media not to report the facts of one of my murder trials on the morning of jury selection, and they did it anyway under a theory that the public has a right to know. I wish the president had not prejudged the investigation when he did so. I wish Loretta Lynch had not met with Bill Clinton on the tarmac. So I, I wish a lot of things had not happened in this case. Again, this is a unusual fact pattern which leads to unusual conclusions. Okay, so in terms of the public's right to know, do you share that same measure about whether or not the FBI should talk about any investigation they have into Donald Trump's campaign's ties to Russia? Well, as a general rule, the Bureau does not confirm or deny the existence of an investigation, although that rule uh, lately has been honored more in its breach. <laughs> so if you want the Bureau to update the public about a, an investigation into Mr. Trump, then they're also going to need to update the public about the Clinton Foundation investigation, if one exists. Remember, there's a referral on Secretary Clinton's perjury uh, there's an allegation that she committed perjury. Yeah. There was a referral letter sent by Chairman Goodlatte and Chaffetz. They have not updated Congress. I don't view his letter as an update on the facts of the investigation. I view it as a notice document. I, we want, I want you to know my previous testimony uh, has changed. The matter is still open. That's how I viewed the letter. Well, one of your colleagues on the House Oversight Committee says that you and your Republican colleagues are basically just accepting this double standard, that you do want the update on Hillary Clinton's emails, but you're not pressing the FBI for any update that could be, of course, wildly relevant to the presidential race if Donald Trump's campaign had some sort of connection to Russia. Well, I'm sure my colleague on oversight was not referring to me because maybe I'm a universe of one. I don't want an update on, on the status of the email investigation. I'm not entitled to an update on the status of the email investigation. I used to work for the Department of Justice. They should not be discussing the facts of an investigation until the investigation is over. Now, if my colleague meant that Comey should have kept it a secret that they had potentially hundreds of thousands of new emails, uh, I just find that interesting. A couple of months ago, they thought Jim Comey was the second coming of Christ. And a couple of months later, now they think that he should be investigated for a violation of the Hatch Act. I don't like relativism, whether it exists on my side of the aisle or their side of the aisle. I think the same rules ought to apply. This is a very difficult, unusual fact pattern. But, Allison, it is difficult and unusual because of decisions made by people not named Jim Comey. I mean, Secretary Clinton is the reason you and I are having this conversation, not Jim Comey. So, Congressman, if Hillary Clinton were to win the race a week from now, should the American public and voters expect years and years of more investigations and committee hearings into things that you believe 
are wrongdoing? Uh, it depends. Um, Congress um, does not have jurisdiction, and frankly, we are terrible at investigating potential crimes. But the legislative branch does have an obligation to provide oversight, and part of that oversight, frankly, includes the Department of Justice. I mean, the Department of Justice is funded by Congress, so we should provide oversight after things have happened, just like we should provide oversight over the CIA and the State Department. But it's not our job to investigate potential criminality. We're bad at it. And even if we found evidence of a crime, there's nothing we can do about it. That's an executive branch function. So it, it, it kind of depends upon the nature of the investigation and what our motive and intent and purpose is. Congressman Trey Gowdy, thanks so much for joining us on New Day. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's take a look now at a new Monmouth University poll on the email issue. 38% say... Hillary Clinton has something to hide. But look at the breakdown by party affiliation. You have 68% of Republicans and 41% of independents, but only 8% of Democrats who think there is something to hide. That is a considerable difference. The emails are connected to the investigation into Benghazi. Earlier, I spoke with Congressman Trey Gowdy. He's the chairman of the House Select Committee on Benghazi. Chairman Gowdy, I want to get your reaction to the decision by the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to turn over her private email server to the Justice Department. What do you think about this? About damn time was my initial reaction. We asked her in March to turn that server over to a neutral, detached, independent arbiter like the Inspector General. I can't help but smile at the notion that somebody is voluntarily turning something over to the FBI. They generally don't ask. They, they generally tell you to do so and I doubt very seriously that they ask her to turn her server, server over. If they have jurisdiction, they don't need to ask. They, they just go get it. Hillary Clinton this week certified under penalty of perjury that she has turned over all of the emails uh, related to her time at the State Department. Uh, do you take her at that word? Well, I read that statement, and it's easier to read Egyptian hieroglyphics than it is to parse the words that her lawyer wrote in that statement. Whenever you see the phrase on information and belief, uh, that should be a blinking red light for you to be suspicious of it. So, so uh, that's what do you my mean? But when, now, it, when it says that on information and belief, she believes this to be true, well, or how, this is true. So, so well, explain Brianna, to me, uh, and, 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 through, with a legal perspective here, I'll explain be happy to me to. your concerns about that. I'll be happy to. Did she go through the emails? Of the 60,000 emails, did she go through each one of them and separate them personal versus public record? No. Her attorney did it. Her attorney who has a fiduciary and ethical obligation to her, not to the taxpayer, not to the public, but to her. So how in the world can she aver that the public record is complete when she herself did not go through and look at each one of those emails? We found 15 that she did not turn over to the State Department. So we know for a fact that that statement is not correct. Remember the 15, the nine in whole and the six in part that Cindy Blumenthal gave to us that the State Department never had? Where were those? How did her lawyer miss those 15? So no, I don't believe the statement. But the statement wasn't to me, it was to a federal judge and I'll let him or her uh, handle that. We've seen certainly some of the requests go from Benghazi. Uh, there seems to be a concern now about Libya really in general, uh, beginning with the invasion by the U.S. and its allies. Are, is the committee expanding its purpose to include Clinton's email practices or just as they pertain to these other issues that you're interested in? Just as it pertains to, to making sure that the public record is complete with respect to Libya and Benghazi. I have no jurisdiction over Bolivia or Paraguay or what used to be Somalia. I'm not interested in bridesmaids' dresses or yoga routines. None of that is, first of all, not my business. Second of all, it's not my jurisdiction. But I am entitled to every document that relates to Libya and Benghazi and, and what our policy was in Libya and whether anti-Western sentiment contributed to the attack or whether it was a spontaneous reaction to a video, as we were told at one point. I'm entitled to all of those records. And how in the world we can be assured that the public record is complete, given this email arrangement that she had with herself, as curious as it was, that's going to be the challenge.
I asked you that because a lot of Democrats who support Hillary Clinton look at the committee and they say there's been mission creep on the goal of your committee. What do you say to that? Uh, I would say they need look no further than uh, their own uh, putative 2016 candidate. I didn't advise her to have her own server. I didn't advise her to rely on Sidney Blumenthal as her primary advisor on Libya. I didn't advise her to keep her public records for 20 months after she separated from service and not turn them over to the Department of State. I didn't advise her to say the, the record is complete and then we find 15 emails where they weren't. And God knows I didn't advise her to say there's no classified information on the server when we know now that there was classified information on the server. So I get that they're frustrated. I get that they're disappointed that her that her polling numbers are almost as low as Congress's, but they need to look no further than her. They don't need to blame the Republicans in the House. We're doing what we were supposed to do. And Brianna, I hasten to add, all those other committees that looked in Benghazi, not a single damn one of them figured out that she had this email arrangement with herself. So those investigations must not have been as thorough as we were led to believe. Are you, are you casting doubt on the findings then, those other committees that found really well, no, no, uh, no issue with Benghazi or no certainly uh, a cover-up? Give, give me a finding. Well, those are two separate things. Give me a finding that you think a previous committee found and then tell me whether or not they talked to every eyewitness who would have access to information, because I can tell you they didn't. We have talked to 34 witnesses who have firsthand knowledge that no other committee talked to. So how in the world could the previous investigations be complete when you're not talking to eyewitnesses, you're not accessing the documents, and you haven't even bothered to talk to the Secretary of State who was in charge at the time? How that is a complete, thorough investigation in Benghazi, um, it would be laughed out of court, and it ought to be laughed out of the court of public opinion. But you're raising questions about Republican findings too, right? So th that just proves how bipartisan I am, Brianna. Yes, Republicans can, can run slipshod investigations just like anyone else can.